Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Wyatt, and today I'll be teaching you how to script values on Roblox. So the concept of values is actually really important, even though it's so simple. So all values are, the value object is a part, it's kind of like a part, it's an object that we can create in Roblox. So if we just click plus on workspace, and we type value, we have all these different things right here, and it has the little pointer with the finger. Um, and we have, so we have bool values, brick color values, C-frame values. We have all of these different things uh, that we can use in a Roblox game. Now, what they are is an object that represents a value in a script. So let's say we have, I'll create a new script just to show you. So let's say we have in our script, we have local bool value equals true. So this is a Boolean value and we have the value set to true. Now, if we wanted to access that value between multiple scripts, we could either make it global, which I'll get into in another video, or we could actually set a value, a value object in workspace or in the player or anywhere in our game. So instead of saying local bool value equals true, that's the same thing as saying this value right here is checked off. This value is equal to true. So the way we can change the value is we could say game.workspace.value, whatever our, our value is, wherever it is, and then we say dot value because it has a bunch of properties and the value object has a value property. I know that might sound a little bit confusing, um, but the value object has a value property. So value dot value equals, and then we can set it because it's a Boolean value, it's a bool value, we can set it to true or false. So if we set it to true, I'll just check this off real quick and we run the game, you'll see if all we have to do is if we look under workspace at that bool value, it's set to true. But maybe now this time, let's just have it set to true when we start the game and then we change it to false in our script. If we go in the game again, you see it'll set it to false. Uh, if we just look right here, see it's false. So bool values are just one of the type of values that we can use, um, of physical values, but we can use any data type that's on Roblox. So we could create a string value if we wanted to. And this is the string value right here. Let's name it string value. So in this value, we store a string. So we can type any text inside of this value. So we could say, hello. We could say, my name is Bob. We could say, row scripter is the best. No, I'm just kidding. But we can type any string value inside of this, right, inside of the string value. And we do it the same way we did before, but we just say game.workspace.string value, our value, dot value, because it's the value property in the string value, equals, and then because it's a string that this value takes, we have to put quotes, and then we could say, hello. And then if we run it, you see, it'll say right here, hello. Now we have to specify it because there's this value. If it's a string value, you can't put a number. So if we were to say like string value dot value equals one, and then we go in, we should get an error to the console or it should just not set it at all. Yeah, see, so it sets it to one, but the, oh, I guess the only reason it was able to set it to one because it's a string, but if we set the bool value to one, game.workspace.value, if we set that boolean value to one, right, and then we come over and we see, see, it's not even gonna set it because it's not, you can't do that. It has to take whatever data type it accepts. So those are two of the values. We have all these other types though. So another type of value we could use is maybe a number value. Uh, so we could put any number in here. We could put 1.1, we could put 1.2 and we can change that in the script. We can say game.workspace, we'll name this num value, right? Just like this. Whoops, I accidentally deleted it, but we could just say right over here, game.workspace.num value equals one. And right now we have it set to 1.1, but if we head in, num value is not a value workspace. I think I spelled it wrong, that's why. Num value right here, uh, let's put that right back in. We have to say dot value, of course. And then we run that again. And you'll see if we go over to workspace and we look at it, num value is now equal to one. Now, something that a lot of people don't know, and I actually explained this in my live stream the other day, people don't know what the difference between a number value and an int value is. So we have that num value right there, and we also have that int value. 
And the difference between these is that in an int value, we can only say one, two, three. We can only say whole numbers. We can't say 1.1, right? It'll, it won't let us do that. But in a number value, we can say 1.1, 1.2. We can say all these different increments in between the current number and the next number, which just isn't possible with an int value. So this is cool, and there are a bunch of other types of values that you can use, but let me show you a practical example of where you use values. So maybe this is script one right here. Uh, and what we can do is, let's just delete these values that I have in workspace, and let's create a new string value. So I'll create a new string value just like this, and I'll name this name. Now what we can do is right now name is equal to nothing. We can set that value so game.workspace.name.value, we can set that value to Wyatt because that's my name. And then what we can do, since we, this is a global variable, right? This is a variable that we can access from any script. We can create another script under server script service and we can access that value. So now we can say print, we'll wait one because it has to set it. And then we'll print game workspace.name.value and as you'll see all we have to do is if we run the game we can get a variable and have it between multiple scripts uh oh it looks like we have an error right here game.workspace.name.value equals Wyatt attempt to index string with value oh it's because workspace has a name property my bad so we'll just say my name we'll change the name of that so we just say game that works based on my name, game that works based on my name. And we run it again. And as you see, wait one, Wyatt, my name comes up. Now, if we were just to do this the normal way, if we were to say local val equals true or local name equals Wyatt, this is in script one, but we have no way to access this value from script two. With having these values, these physical value objects in workspace or in players or in players UI, wherever we put them, we can access these values in between scripts. Let me show you another cool use for values. So we have also we have all these values, but we also have a vector three value. And as you probably know, vector three is how we size parts and how we position parts. So if I create a new uh, part under workspace, and I'm just going to name this sizing part. What we can do, we'll name this vector value. And then in script one, what we'll do is we'll set vector value. So maybe we have something that's doing like a trampoline that jumps up and down by itself or something like that, right? A trampoline that sizes itself, um, maybe a pet script, maybe something else, right? So what we will do is we'll say game.workspace.vectorValue.value equals vector three dot new one comma one comma one so that's going to be the end size of this part but maybe we don't want to actually set the size of the part in this script maybe we want to keep our code clean and organized so we put that in another script and then the way we do that is we'll just say game.workspace.sizingpart.size equals game.workspace.vectorValue.value and then in here, we'll actually, we'll just wait one again, just because it takes a sec for it to set it from the one script. And as you'll see, when we run the game, it resizes the part to the value that we set, but we didn't even specify that variable in that one script. So we can keep our code so much more clean and so much more organized by using these value objects. Now, the final example I wanna show you has to do with changing values and when values are changed. So as you probably know, we can do leader stats on Roblox. We can specify leader stats and they'll come up on these, this leaderboard right here. So let's just create a leader stats value. So we'll say local folder, we'll create a folder first, equals instance, oh, we don't want that. We're gonna say instance.new folder. And then we just need to get that when the player's added. Gain that player's that player added, connect that to a function, grab the player. And then so when the player's added, we'll create a new folder under the player. We're gonna say folder.name equals leader stats. And the only way to actually create something that says coins or points or anything on the leaderboard is by using these value objects and putting it under this leader stats folder. So 
we could say local coins value equals instance instance dot new and then we create a new int value and that's just like the value I was showing you earlier when we created the int value under workspace it's an object it's the integer value object now so we create the new value and we're gonna parent that to the folder just like that uh, and then we'll say coins value dot name equals coins and if we run it or we actually have to play it because it'll have to come up on our leader stats on our players leaderboard we have a coins value and that's being managed by as you see in this leader stats folder that's being managed by this coins value so if we change this coins value to 10 you see we can change the amount of coins that the player sees that they have now what I was saying before is we want to be able to hook into when this value is changed we can get a changed event um, and all values have this property where you can get when they're changed so what we'll say is coins value dot change that's the event of the coins value connect it to a function and then we'll get the new value so whatever the new value is so let's say we have a value right let's say we have uh, an int value under workspace so right now the value is at one whenever we change that value to two that gets passed in through here through the new value parameter all we can do is we can print new value equals and then we concatenate that with the new value and then if we go in oh we just have to close that off if we go in you'll see any time that we change this value we can hook into that event so it's another use if you want to get whenever a variable is changed you can use values and hook into that and wait until it's changed so um, right now so coins is equal to zero if we set it to one see it prints new value one because we're able to hook into that changed event of the value so values are really important especially if you want to share variables between your scripts on roblox Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. As always, I'll have the paste of and link with the code in the description of this video, and I'll see you guys later.